So the, uh, the city has created some interesting uh, data uh, interfaces. Um, they've been working on it for a while. And uh, Victor and I have been frustrated that, you know, when we're trying to figure out what the status of our building permits is, the ISD stuff wasn't available readily. Same with liquor licensing. Um, and it looks like the city's turning a corner on that. Um, it's too bad we don't have any city IT folks, but maybe DPW can go and tell everyone. We're appreciating that. So one of the things that I thought would be fun to do, and it should be an ongoing discussion, I'm not going to have a lengthy discussion on it, but I, I just was curious how we're doing against, uh, against some of the other neighborhoods regarding uh, liquor license, because there's often uh, 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 people who will say, well, the North End seems to have just a, a super high density. Um, so uh, the, uh, the city data, you can, you can actually take a look at all the liquor licenses and look at them over, over the, uh, the map of the city. This is where we are. And it, in fact, is the most dense uh, part of the, of the, uh, of the city uh, in terms of liquor license density. Um, You're not going to be able to read this eye chart here, but I, I, I was curious in terms of how our population density is for other parts of the city. We're the highest population density in this neighborhood of any part of the city, and interestingly, for, for those of you who don't know. I mean, many people probably can feel that, but it, it's actually true. Um, in terms of um, liquor licenses, you know, we have and these numbers, the, the database, I don't think is absolutely complete, so it's going to be a slightly lower than the numbers that we have. But you can see the spread of liquor licenses. Even more interesting is liquor license seats. And you can see that there are some places like Fenway, Kenmore, that just have huge amounts of seats. And we have a pretty substantial amount of seats. There are some neighborhoods, um, you know, Roxbury, Hyde Park, Mattapan, that have almost no seats. Um, hence the uh, recent liquor license changes that uh, made available new uh, licenses just for those neighborhoods. What, what I thought was interesting is that we can see you know, how many people uh, in our neighborhood there are per license. Um, when, when, when this number starts getting low, um, you sort of know that you've got a lot of licenses. And our number isn't the lowest. <clears throat> the lowest is actually downtown financial district, and, and you actually have other low numbers in places like the West End, but it's it's pretty low. It's around 100, and you know that num number does vary. Up of uh, in Roslyn Tail, 1600. Population per license seat is interesting. We have in, in, for our uh, 10,500 people in the North End, we have about 8,800 pouring seats. So we've got we have only 1.27 people per seat. That's Pretty, a pretty even ratio. That means it's pretty dense. And if you take a look at these two things, do a little division. Actually, the division gets you to a, a compiled statistic that I uh, thought was useful. I call the bar misery index. And it basically divides this number by this number. Or a better way to look at it is you're taking a look at the density of licenses per thousand square meters. And we are number three on the list behind West End at 122 and um, Fenway Kenmore at 50, we're at 17. Interestingly, the seaport is not, uh, it does not have a high index number because it's a huge amount of land. So for comparison's sake, as we're looking at liquor licensing uh, in the future, it is interesting to know sort of where we sit, sit with our sister neighborhoods and <clears throat> the two neighborhoods that are in yellow here, Fenway and the West End are the ones that are hit the, the heaviest. West End because it's a very small population. But Fenway is like a nightclub area, and uh, we have to be careful. Uh, if we find ourselves comparable to nightclub areas, we, we could be asking for trouble. Um, interesting, last slide I'll show. How are we doing on controlling later hours? Uh, if you look at the number of licenses that, that, that we have that are, are late, like one to two, or later closing, two is I guess as late as it goes right now, uh, it doesn't look that bad. But if you do the multiplier for seats, um, you find that because of establishments that are 250 plus seats, 200 to 250, 100, that in the three categories, pre-midnight closing, midnight to one, and one to two, 
one to two closings lead every category of establishment except for the smallest establishments. So the little guys who are trying to get their first liquor license, you know, I think, and I think this is a truism across the city, all the neighborhood associations tend to really, you know, be sticklers. Like, well, we don't want, we don't want you to close late, uh, you know, too late. But if you look at, if you look at where the real skew is, it's the big establishments that, that actually uh, dominate the pouring seats. So, I, you know, I just, I want to make sure we have perspective and, you know, we look at the little guys and the big guys in context. So I thought I would share with you some of that analytical uh, fun and uh, more of that is going to be coming because we have more uh, data available from the city than I think we ever have before. Um, so with that, I'm going to uh, turn hey, this slide. Jack Roth. Could, can you oh, get sure. that either on to northendwaterfront.com and or the regional review? Well, if people are, are interested yeah. in, in So we seeing, can take a closer yeah. look at that information. Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd be happy to. What I'll do is I'll post those three slides onto our, our website. Um, and I'm happy to list the sources, too. So if any folks want to go in and take a look at some of the source data that we use. One thing that's, that's interesting, and, and Victor has been um, great at doing this, and, and you as well, historically, we've kept a manual list of things like liquor license, you know, closing hours for establishments, just to keep track and sort of know what's going on. The city does have this database that I referenced. The one um, area of data that was not reliable were the closing hours. Um, so I was trying to figure out how do we stack up against other neighborhoods in closing hours? Because you know, it could be that we close earlier than other neighborhoods. I have no idea. But it turned out that none of the, the closing data was reliable on the city's database, which you would think that should sort of be one of the first things that they try to get right. But um, it's still a work in process, and just two months ago, the data wasn't even there. So you know, you take what you can get. So I'll I'll put the data out there. I'll put the slides out there. I'll put them on. Uh, and anyone who doesn't regularly look at it, it's nura.org is our website. So um, with that, I, um, the the one thing I'm going to say in closing of the presidential report, I I, I was heartened uh, that I got a lot of uh, emails and phone calls from people who had read my letter to the, uh, the editor of the Globe last Sunday regarding the previous Sunday's uh, infomercial on real estate development uh, that had been written. And uh, it just made me feel good that people still read the newspaper. So I felt good for the Globe. I'm no longer worried about it. Ford? <clears throat> yes? And going back to your slides, when you mentioned the West End, does that include the Bullfinch Triangle? Yes, it does. Yes. Yeah, it's, right. No, the Bullfinch Drive is like the black hole of liquor licenses for the West End. And they're fairly removed from the, they're fairly removed from the existing population of right. the West End, right. not the future population. You know, and the way the, the way the city designates neighborhoods too is is you know sort of historic rather than useful. So like like looking at the downtown licenses, I've started dipping it up, taking the Faneuil Hall stuff out of the financial district because they're two totally different areas. Um, you know, but the, the, the city just sort of uh, schmoozed it all together. So the same thing with the West End. Any, uh, yes. Well, thank yeah. you for doing that, compiling that data. I mean, this has been an ongoing concern of Nura's for a long time, and I think more so with the mayor now wanting to turn this into an inter entertainment district with 4 a.m. I got it right. Well, we don't know that we're going to be an entertainment district. We do know that there may be some entertainment districts. Well, like potentially see could I ask you to put it on an agenda for a later meeting when we can really discuss the implications okay. of this? Yeah. I mean, we have one seat almost for every baby, including the <laughs> population. Yeah. Well, here. I don't have any good statistics on how many babies we have. Oh, that yes. would be an interesting thing, too. Uh, yeah, I mean, this was, this was intended to prompt discussion. The folks at this meeting would like to have sort of an ongoing discussion where we continue and push this and try to do more analysis and understand, because I think we're going to uncover some interesting stuff. And one thing that I want to point out is that I think, you know, one, one thing that I've stepped away from it is that, you know, we, we don't want to be excessively hard on the smaller entrepreneurial uh, startups with a small number of seats, because that may not be where the gravitational pull is strongest. And secondly, um, we, when we stack up against some of the other neighborhoods, actually might, uh, might have a lot of things that we're doing very right, that we could share with some of the other neighborhoods that are having more of a tough time. I think the Fenway Kenmore folks 
I mean, we've just started, uh, Steve Wintermars with, you know, Neighborhood Association of Back Bay, we work together with something called the Alliance of Downtown Civic Organizations, which is a bunch of different neighborhood associations, and NUNIC is involved in that too. And um, it's, a, it's eight associations so far, and Fenway is one of them, and boy, they have some unique problems down in Fenway. So, you know, but, but they, they don't know how to do some of the things that we've done here, so we're trying to spread the knowledge around so that, uh, you know, we're not just being hypercritical of what's going on here, we're thinking, well, maybe we've done some things right and we can help other neighborhoods, and maybe they've done some things right and they can help us too.